You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. We are gathered here as advisors, as scientists. The kind of place we expect a ghost to like to walk around. Hey, we all know that we're gonna die, baby. I'll help you. I'm something of a witch. Welcome to Mission Spooky. I'm your fantastic host, JC. With me today, as per usual, the queen of everything herself and our local cryptid enthusiast, Cord. And tonight we have somebody in our studio. Well, not our studio because we're virtual, <laughs> but we have someone in our chat with us. I don't remember the Kiki, you take over. Yeah, okay, thank you. Today, we welcome one of our own Pennsylvania paranormal researchers and founder of the Harrisburg Area Paranormal Society, John Curley. Welcome, John, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me on, everybody. Glad to be here. He says now. (laughs) (laughs) Our listeners might know John from The Haunted TV series, as well as Ghost Nation episode, The Lady in Black. Hopefully, we'll talk a little bit about that later. How's things going? Good, good. It's uh, the busy season. You know, it gets close to Halloween. The more cases you get, everybody gets the uh, the spookies at uh, Halloween. So they get you get a lot of case files in in like September, October, into the new year. So it's been busy for us. We gotta have pretty much have a case like every weekend, damn near. So until the first of the year. So we're we're pretty busy. Yeah, JC, we need that. We need cases. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you guys out to do stuff. Come on, man. I'll go get suitcases. I don't know why we need so many. I have 30 already. Every time you tell me we need cases. I'm not good at finding them. I'm good at going to them. That's Right. There you You go. You give me the cases, I will be there. Oh, my. Okay. So you, one of the biggest reasons I was excited to talk to you is that I listened to an interview with Anna Maria Manalo, and that was over on mysteries and monsters just to let everybody know where to go if you want to listen to that interview it was great but she mentioned you john and said that you guys have been working on a book yes and i am super excited about this well as of this recording it is not out yet right do we have a release date uh it's in october i believe sometime okay yeah it might it might be out there it's gonna be called unholy structure this sounds incredibly well creepy but (laughs) still (laughs) that's why you're here i want to hear the creepy oh yeah yeah that was the uh very interesting case that we did. It was an old mansion uh, built in 1754, and a uh, big part of uh, Lancaster. The history of it dates back to 1754, but uh, there was memoirs written about the home. And even back in the 1800s, they were reporting uh, paranormal activity in the house way back then, written in the memoirs of no one wanted to go in the attic because they thought it was... Uh, haunted it was too many dark places and it just felt like there was something in the attic and uh when we were there we recorded some stuff in the attic actually i heard a disembodied voice in the attic it was a uh, female and it said fire i was up there by myself setting up a camera and i just heard this voice like in the corner of the attic it was like fire i turned around i'm like whoa that was pretty creepy it was up there it's dark i couldn't see anything but i was hearing this female voice come out of thin air and uh there was no females with us it was we were all males i didn't know what it meant until you know i talked to contractors contractors were actually fixing this mansion up to be sold and uh the contractors were experiencing uh these uh, paranormal events going on as they were trying to restructure the house and tearing down walls making new rooms you know they're basically changing the way the, the mansion looked they were doing a hell of a job it looked great but the you know the guys were experiencing all this paranormal phenomena. One of the guys, the foreman, he came in early one morning. I think it was around three in the morning to work because it was hot. So they were starting early in the morning, like three, two, three o'clock in the morning to beat the heat and get out early, in, you know, earlier in the day. And he was working, and he thought one of his guys came in and he was talking to him, and somebody was talking back to him. He thought it was one of his guys. He said he was talking to him for like an hour. And the guy was responding, and it was not one of his guys. It was a ghost that was in the house that was responding back to his talking to him. He said, I had no idea. I thought it was one of my guys. And then one of my guys comes in and says, who the hell are you talking to? And he's like, I'm talking to you. He's like, dude, I just got here. He's like, what? 
He said, you're the only one here. He said, well, who the hell was I talking to? He's like, I don't know. It wasn't me. From that point on, they wouldn't, they didn't like coming in early in the morning. They, they wouldn't come in at like two or three o'clock in the morning after that. <laughs> that's, that's Until fair. Oh, we'll, we'll sweat during the day <laughs> instead of being on wow. that night. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> better. Yeah. And then he's like, I just, he said, it started getting too hot. So we started working back at nights again. He said, I would just turn the radio up real loud and these things would just get louder. <laughs> He said it would be banging, <laughs> doors would be oh slamming. God. He said it was, it was all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when they, they contacted us. The homeowner contacted us and said, you know, can you come in and, and validate these claims? And I was like, yeah. She said she thought the construction workers were maybe, you know, trying to get over on them or something like that. And uh, she's like, no, I, I was the first one in the house. And I wasn't even in the house like 10 minutes. And here, like someone walking up on the uh, second floor and there was no one in the house. I definitely hear footsteps up there. It's like boom, 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 coming, you know, down the hallway. And I'm like, that's definitely footsteps. Uh, and then it was a loud bang, like something fell over. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to wait outside till my guys get here. Cause I'm, <laughs> if something paranormal does happen, I want somebody to help me. You know, so I went outside and waited and they, they all showed up and they're like, uh, what's going on? I'm like, dude, this, this place can be pretty active, man. Like I've already heard things in the house already. I was only in there like maybe five minutes and heard footsteps and a bang. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we we started experiencing disembodied voices and stuff like right away. At one point in the, in the night, one of the one of my investigators, Carl, he's like, maybe we should turn off the lights. And uh, we heard a, a disembodied voice. And it was like, not right now. I was like, whoa, did you hear that? <laughs> They're like, that was you. That was, that was you. And I was like, no, it wasn't me. I said, it was a disembodied voice, man. It was like right in between me and another guy. I'm like, that was right here. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm reading something. Don't. <laughs> Let me save my Game Boy Color game first, okay? <laughs> it was an interesting place, man. I tell you, I wish I would have had the money to buy it myself because I'd probably own it right now. But uh, it, it was an awesome place. Uh, the paranormal activity in there was phenomenal, man. I mean, they were seeing full-bodied apparitions. They were even seeing a uh, a ghost dog a black uh, German shepherd in the house. And uh, I had talked to neighbors about this house and uh, they were all like, yeah, man, there's a black dog that's, uh, it's like a ghost dog. Uh, they had a like a garage that was detached from the house. And uh, one of the people were cutting the grass out there. They said they heard a dog barking inside of the shed. So you open the door and there's this black German shepherd there like showing his teeth growling and he slams the door shut and, and locks it. And uh, waits for the uh, the homeowner to get there. The homeowner gets there and he said, "Look, there's a there's a big ass black German Shepherd in there. He ain't too happy." And I said, "I don't own a black German Shepherd." He said, "There's a black German Shepherd in there." They opened the door and there was no dog in there. And then they started seeing it in the house as well. The uh, construction workers seen it up on the second floor uh, like two or three times. It was uh, growling, showing his teeth, and then it would just it just disappear. But when I heard that voice in the attic that said fire. I went to him and I asked the, the uh, foreman, I said, hey, man, was there ever a fire in here? And he's like, how'd you know that? I said, I, just, I heard a voice in the attic say fire. And I, I assumed that maybe there was maybe a fire. He said, you heard a voice? I said, yeah, I heard a female voice in the attic. He said, well, that's where the fire damage was. He said, we cleaned it all up, but there was there was definitely a fire in the attic. I was like, wow. Gadzooks. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, re really cool uh, place, and uh, I think Anna Anna's writing a really cool book about it with that unholy structure. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of phenomena that happened in the house, and they carried on outside the house. Like things followed followed me home, and it did, it's it's really interesting. Good read. It's going to be a really good read. Everything that happened in there was was one hundred percent true. It happened to us, so I think people will really get a, a really good, exciting book out of it. That's uh, that sounds great. Honestly, I'm I'm intrigued. I don't know how to read, but I'll read that. Book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read it to you, JC. You'll be fine. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's your uh, nighttime reading. <laughs> <laughs> tell me a bedtime story, Cordy Poo. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna tell you about the time that they saw the spooky black German Shepherd. <laughs> Oh, that's my favorite. Oh, my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll put a link to either the book is available or if there's a link for pre-order, I'll make sure I link that up in the show notes when for when that comes out. 
it's always one of those things with there being construction things going on. The the only other story I remember a lot of weird stuff happening was, uh, I'm sure you know, or probably heard of the Biltmore Estate in oh, yeah. North Carolina. Okay. So I lived in Greensboro, North Carolina for about 20 years. And there was an old hotel, downtown Greensboro, that Biltmore bought as an extension of the Biltmore Estate. Right. So their idea was we're going to do it up as as cool as the Biltmore is. They were kind of redoing the whole downtown area anyway. So it was really cool. They had I think they went through three construction crews during the rebuilding because there was so much activity there. I love these stories. So it is a story. I hope it's true. Well, actually, I don't hope it's true because it was actually dangerous. Um, One of the guys said that he saw a nail gun just lift up off the floor and it shot at him. Whoa. Yeah. Well, that's actually covered under the warranty. Uh, he could return it right to the manufacturer. It shouldn't be acting like that. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> that's fucked up because nail guns can ruin your goddamn life. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was not. He was not happy. Uh, that supposedly they they ran out that day and they went through the fourth one uh, that came. Well, I think it was still the maybe it was still the same company. It's been a while since I heard this story, but it always reminds me of people doing construction and like changing things, you know, because they had to bring some walls down to put some newer. I mean, you know, they had like old plumbing and old electric wiring. Wire. Yeah, it was bad. You know, and the plate, it wasn't like super abandoned. But then again, the previous owners hadn't really kept up with anything because they didn't really have to. So, yeah, they were really tearing into that place. Uh, there were some pictures of uh, some of the rooms that they that these things happened in of the events but it was also a speakeasy back in the day so there was a an underground hidden cellar too so it it definitely had some old stories that went with it and of course there was the there's always like the one about the hooker that gets killed in the <laughs> in the hotel during the speakeasy days and I was like oh god you know i was just say sex worker so definitely fits the bill for the old don't don't do too much construction because you might piss off somebody yeah, you're kind of stirring up the uh, the activity when you're changing the location. Maybe something that's been uh, lingering around for a hundred some years, and now you're starting to change what the uh, place looks like. It might uh, get a little offensive, but it with it and uh, really kick up the activity in the house. And apparently, definitely opinionated too. Like you know, don't don't turn the lights off. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not ready for that. Excuse you. It's too spooky in here, guys. <laughs> There's a ghost. <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> but that, you know, there's movies about that. But I always wonder, like, you know, the ghost is like, um, I'm the one that's alive, and you guys aren't real. What is going on here? Don't you dare turn. Who? Where am I? What? Someone's talking about turning off lights. You better not. Yeah. We don't know, man. Yeah, paranormal stuff is um. You know, we've been doing it for 25 years, damn near, and we're not any closer to an answer than we were 50 <laughs> years ago. You know, so it's uh, it's all like an enigma, you know what I mean? It's just, it shit happens when it happens. You, there's no reason why it happens. It just, it happens. Any time of day, any time of night, something paranormal can happen. You just got to be the lucky one to be there and catch it. Or unlucky, you know, however you fright want to <laughs> yeah. point of view it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Most people categorize it under unlucky. <laughs> but In our investigations, we're just trying to validate the claims. I mean, I've seen so many people over the years talking about they can get rid of ghosts and demons and, you know, all this movie spectacular bullshit that's that's all it is to me all the years i've been doing it, i've never seen a demonic possession not saying it's not real but i've never seen one i've seen people acting like they were possessed and uh but no supernatural phenomena was behind it you know and i have a question like how do you phase out because obviously like a bunch of people probably come to you like hey can you do an investigation what are like some key words that are red flags to i don't want to go there uh when people start talking like oh i'm, I'm a warlock or I'm, I'm a i'm a vampire or something you know it's just like what the, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about you're a vampire one guy called me and said, yeah i'm a vampire and uh my uncle's a warlock and i'm like oh shit here we go <laughs> <laughs> this is like two o'clock in the morning by the way you know i'm like i answer the phone i'm like hello hi is this the paranormal guy i'm like uh uh yeah this is the paranormal guy <laughs> you know <laughs> can you get rid of demons i'm like uh no, I can't get rid of demons. You sure? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a vampire and my uncle's a warlock. We've, we've unleashed something in here. If you don't get here tonight, somebody's going to die. I'm like, looks like someone's going to die then because I'm not coming there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely a no yeah, buddy. That's, that's not gonna happen uh, you know uh, why are we we're in delaware <laughs> Ooh, that's even like a long trip like <laughs> yeah. yeah no offense but like two o'clock in the morning a couple yeah. hours i've had some really funny shit over the years with people then there are some cases where people are you know you take every claim with a grain of salt they're all they all sound the same you know you go to a place oh i'm seeing ghosts i'm seeing shadow figures i'm seeing this and that you're like oh you know okay but you know you're there to validate the claims and you know i want to see it i gotta validate it i gotta film it you know i want to film it but a lot of times you don't catch anything you know what i mean you don't catch anything on video but you catch a lot of stuff on audio you catch more stuff on audio than you do video and uh that's what's the interesting part about it is there is something else after you die it's more than you're just dead and that's it there is some kind of uh physical body's gone but there's some kind of subconscious mind that lives on it communicates it's, it's able to think it's able to communicate it's able to talk how the hell it's able to talk the only way i can think is it uses sound waves and stuff like that but it does happen and, and and there's a few there's a lot of cases that we've done that i can't explain uh i got into this to debunk paranormal stuff and uh over the years it's more stuff that i can't debunk of what the hell was that what did i just see what did i just hear you know, it's it's really intriguing stuff that keeps you doing it. Because the more you do it, the more responses you start getting. They kind of open yourself up to this paranormal realm, if you want to say. And uh, once they know you, you can hear them, it's like they communicate more. It's really weird. <laughs> That's so funny. That's like right on point with what I've heard so many other people say who are, you know, for lack of a better word, sensitives that have said exactly those words. Like if you allow yourself to just be open to it uh, before you know it, you start hearing the things and seeing the things and then you wind up getting that more often. Yeah. And then you have to kind of teach yourself in some cases how to block that off so that it's not a constant influx all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not a psychic, but I sure do hear my name called in a lot of a lot of haunted locations uh and i've recorded them you know it says my name it'll say my full name sometimes that was in the franklin house tavern and something said my full name it said john curly and that's that's pretty amazing to me and there was no one there on that floor we were on another floor and it says my name written in the recorder like john curly like that's that's creepy as shit when it does it but there's no one there you know i'm like oh, that's really that's really <laughs> creepy as shit but uh there was definitely no one there You're like this is why we're here yeah this is why we're here and <laughs> if you guys are ever interested in going to this place uh the franklin house tavern let me know i'll take you there i can i can get into franklin yes. house i mean uh, yeah gordon and i are both in <laughs> yeah. um whenever you want we're we're there friday Literally, nights work best for us <laughs> yeah somebody somebody could like drop their doily on the ground and blame it on a ghost i will show up <laughs> 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 yeah same so we're going tonight when we're done recording. <laughs> is that what you're saying? i have a six-year-old guys just enough time Slow to make down. a phone call just enough time to make a phone call and get down there and then we'll be good oh i'm gonna go God. fight some ghosts I'll, I'll be back <laughs> i bought this equipment package to go ghost finding so long ago and it's still in the box <laughs> i just want to go and do it so <laughs> To be fair, uh, we originally started the podcast thinking, oh, well, we could we can do like little team, you know, things and go places. And then we had COVID like right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we almost like, well, almost immediately. We did like one <laughs> excursion and then stopped. That's a two year, two year stoppage answer then. Yeah. Yeah, it was not. It sucked. That sucked. That sucked. Yeah. Um. Yeah. COVID was such a bummer for the paranormal. <laughs> it, was. it really was. It sucked. <laughs> Probably no one else, but the paranormal community for sure. Oh, yeah. Like in any cases, I'm like, I'm, I'm uh, stuck to watching Ghost Adventures. I'm like, this really sh is shit. <laughs> I'm watching Aaron and, uh, Aaron and Zach get possessed every other week. I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> My favorite thing with them is we want to go find ghosts on and get like evidence and as soon as we hear the slightest anything we're running away screaming <laughs> <laughs> Dude. No, that's when you stand and you wait uh, so yeah. uh side note i i was joking with the boys and i was like i'm gonna get zach baggins on the show so <laughs> i did some i did some research uh, oh, and i found out that 
I don't think he does podcasts, no. whatever. But it showed me how much it was to have him come out and be a speaker. How much? 45000 to $74,000, depending dude. on. Wow. Yeah. Fuck right off, my dude. I'll do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I need that job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got some cool ghost stories. Give me ten bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, not even get possessed. I, I got some cool ghost stories. Give me some food. <laughs> right, like can I have some beer and a pizza? Like you guys got fries for JC? He'll do anything. For <laughs> That's right, fries. Fries. I will mm, anything for fries. And then you put cheese on them. Anything. If we go to the Franklin Tavern, Franklin, right? Yeah. They, I'm sure they have fries. They have good food, man. They have really good food. Uh, exactly. We could keep making a joke that I only investigate the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so, JC, what happened in the uh, in the oven when we were? Uh, out? I'm getting real stellar stuff down here, guys. Real, you you keep up there. I'm getting the good evidence. Down. Mm, nom, nom, nom. The fryers just turned on and the fries went in. I didn't even touch it, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It must be a ghost cook. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit i hate you so much <laughs> <laughs> it's a real cool ass place though it's really haunted and uh it was a brothel at one time too so there was some uh humpty dumpty going on up there in those rooms back in the 1800s so. <laughs> <laughs> i have never heard it referred as humpty dumpty but i guess that checks out huh <laughs> it does check out <laughs> oh shit yeah no, it was a place was pretty haunted and i was asking kind of like derogatory questions toward prostitution and it, it answered a couple times i have a theory about that though see there's an archaeologist who talks about how those of us who are very much into history tend to also be able to see ghosts hear ghosts and pick up on historical events that may have happened at a location and he has this interesting theory about how like if you do ask the right questions and you ask them in such a way that you know things are going on during that time period that you'll get responses I don't know I don't know if it's proof but it's kind of like you're opening a portal almost to a time period because you happen to be asking the right questions so there you go I feel like it's what kind of go like so you're a ghost you died in the 1800s do you do you want to just turn a flashlight on and off or would you like to hear it's probably like nice to hear someone talk to you with like the dialect and the slang that was being used in the 1800s because you you haven't had that and ghosts are so attached to the world and their mm. memories so it's it's yeah makes a lot of sense see now i want to go and like like tell like dirty jokes from the 1800s and see if like you know to get a response if i were a ghost i'd probably have fun playing with a flashlight <laughs> yeah but like every cord. every weekend cord like every yeah. another set of group of because, people's coming in listen because if i was a ghost from the 1800s i'd be like what the fuck is this thing and once i figured <laughs> it out once i figured it out i go to all my ghost friends and be like hey dudes check this shit out it's a fire <laughs> but it doesn't burn you <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> also, Kiki, when you said that you could tell jokes from the 1800s, do you have those memorized from when you grew up then? Or uh, <laughs> God damn it! And there's the old joke. Look, it's in the contract. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Got me. Have, Got we me. Have we have fun here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even know how to go about that dirty joke back then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> We're like, Google, dirty jokes, 1800s. <laughs> they fell in the mud, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 Uh, I I actually just got that while I was a little slow today. <laughs> I'm quiet on your end. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> the little hamster wheel was turning in there. And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's funny." <laughs> the worst the worst part was that I found that legitimately funny. I think well, yeah, when you then. wouldn't stop laughing, I was like, "I must have missed something." <laughs> yup, I did. There's the, that's funny. Uh, I don't remember why we were talking about it, but was didn't we talk about how like 
the oldest fart joke is like from I don't know like yeah we 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 mapped that out <laughs> yeah it was pretty funny <laughs> 1900 was BC it, was it a fart joke I, I thought it was like it a, was I thought it was a dick joke or something I no it was it. a fart it was actually it was a fart joke it's from the ancient Sumerian tablet from 1900 uh, BC right yes okay yeah, it just you're came right, to me right. could you Total imagine recall. being the archaeologist though like finding this <laughs> I wish I had been like, that would have been great preserved. my greatest my greatest find in my entire life you get to translating it and it's <laughs> yeah it's a fart joke I have a question for you you said a couple times about validating people's experiences that's your that's your goal when you go places i guess my question is what is what is your validation process like if you just get any evidence is that like validation to you or do you need to like hit specific criteria for that or well, a lot of times when you go into uh, haunted places they're hearing a lot of voices and stuff uh, like disembodied voices or whispery voices and seeing shadow figures and stuff like that so if we can get these shadow figures on film or, or motion tracking uh, cameras that we have, or we can get these disembodied voices or these EVPs on recordings. That's validating their claims. You know, they're hearing this stuff, they're seeing this stuff. And if we catch it, and we produce it to them and say, hey, you're definitely hearing voices. We captured these voices in your house. Um, we can't explain where they're coming from. You know, they're definitely uh, electronic voice phenomena. You know, and if we capture something on video, which I have captured some stuff on video before, and um, it was pretty amazing stuff. Most of the time, you know, if they say they're experiencing things, and we pretty much experience what they, they're experiencing as well. It's uh, pretty cool. Actually, I mean, it scares the shit out of them, but, you know, for us, it's as investigators, it's it's really cool to hear a voice out loud. You hear a disembodied voice. It's, uh, it's stellar, man. You know, that's what keeps you going. You could be dead-ass tired, and then you hear yeah. a voice, you know, pop out of thin air, and you're like, Holy shit, I just heard a voice. It, it makes you excited, you know, that you, you heard a disembodied voice. And this thing pops out of thin air, and there's you know it's no one else but you in the room. Right. And it's a lot of intelligence behind it, too. So it's not like it's just, a, you know, a random word. It'll say sentences of stuff, you know, say their names, say your names. It's pretty It's pretty amazing. And sometimes it answers direct questions, you know. Do you know you're dead? Yes. Do you know, um, do you know how old you are? It'll say how old they are. You know, it's It's... Pretty amazing stuff. The intelligent responses was always the stuff that I had trouble, uh, I guess, finding, experiencing. Like, I've heard other people in places that I've gone get such responses, but I've always had trouble getting, like, legitimate answers to questions. Yeah, I mean, you could ask the same question a hundred times, and then on the hundred and first time, it'll respond. It's really weird. It's just totally random when it happens. You know, there's no explanation for it why it happens i mean you know there's right that these things are definitely made up of energy some sort of magnetic energy or you know electronic you know ma you know magnetic fields and stuff like that geomagnetic fields all this stuff is coinciding to make a paranormal event somehow some way we just haven't been able to figure it out I, and a lot of times it's in, a person too it's not only a location it's a person a particular person can cause right. major paranormal phenomena when they go, this person goes into this particular place, it's like a positive and a negative wire hitting. Boom, and it makes that spark. That's kind of what happens. You know, you got this person in this location, it releases this energy, and there's this phenomenon that happens. It's, it's amazing. And it, a lot of times it's involved around an individual and not just the location. Right. I've talked to uh, really famous paranormal uh, parapsychologists. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him, Dr. Barry Taff. He did the most one of the most famous cases in paranormal history which was the entity case which was the ghost that was raping a woman yes oh back in yep, 74 yep. okay yeah he's actually a good friend of mine uh, i talked to him quite a bit online and stuff he lives out in california but uh he's been on my podcast as well i mean this guy's done over like almost five thousand cases that he's investigated he has quite an you know quite a take on what's going on and he doesn't seem to think that there, he said there might be ghosts, but a lot of times it's an individual creating the phenomena, not so much as a ghost. It's a person that's producing paranormal phenomena. More like a psychic thing than a haunting thing. Yeah, it's like, and he said it's a lot of times it's people that are really highly, uh, that are really seizure prone, stuff like that, that they can, they really have high levels of brain activity that can create paranormal phenomena. 
poltergeist activity. That is an interesting take. Yeah, because he said in the entity case, he said they did see this figure, this mass of, he said it looked like plasma, like green plasma. It looked like a person, like a muscular person. And he said after all the years of investigating that, they think that this woman, Doris Byther, was creating this stuff with her mind. And it wasn't so much as paranormal activity. It was her creating this stuff with her mind. Wow. So my question with that is, now I'm not I'm not super familiar with that case. I don't know if you're... They made a movie about it. You ever watched the movie? Creepy. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. It, I So I watched it when I was way too young. Here's the story. <laughs> I was probably like eight years old, nine years old, something around that. But like I had to sleep in the living room watching Pokemon 2000 with my parents keeping their door open for two weeks because I was so <laughs> fucking terrified <laughs> of that movie. That is a creepy ass movie. Yikes. That is a creepy movie. It fucked me up. <laughs> so my question would be about this case. Did they like find that she had any trauma relating to that, that she would be creating that with her mind or. Yeah, I think that, I think that she was uh, actually molested as a kid. That makes, mm. to me, that would make a lot more sense if it was some kind of trauma related. And her, all of her relationships with men were like just horrible. Um, she had like, yeah. she had like four kids all by different men. And, you know, she lived, she was a single parent. She had a pretty rough life. And it wasn't it wasn't easy for her. And uh, but Dr. Taft did say that there was this phenomena that they really could not explain. He said whether it was by her, which they really thought it was her creating it out of her mind, but there was this other phenomena that they they could not explain that was supernatural. It's is very it's very interesting. I know I've heard I've heard people say that before, specifically about the uh, the Amityville house hauntings. Like a lot of people said that it was like the the girl doing it rather than like ghosts in the house yeah i don't i don't know much about amity i, I mean i the stuff that i've read or i've seen um i don't know too many people who investigate except the warrens uh i think they were the only ones that investigated it i don't think they really let anyone else touch it no. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah I did, I think uh, they're the only ones that's been in there is the warrens yeah there was a couple times where i heard theories about that one too where they thought the little girl in the house was actually doing all the stuff essentially with her with her mind and everything because she was like speaking in different voices to herself and stuff too so it was a whole thing you know all the years i've been doing it, i've never seen a possession or anything demonic i mean i've seen some really weird ass shit i don't know if it was demonic or i, I really don't know what it was but it's it was creepy. I have to give it. I have to give it a hundred percent. It was creepy as shit. But you know, was it demonic? I can't really say it was. You know, because I did use some. You know, religious provocation. If there's something demonic in the house and you're using religious religious provocation, usually something's going to happen. If nothing happened. You would think. Yeah, I mean, just like the Newcastle case. This was that was one of our most interesting and creepy ongoing cases that we still have, and they see shit all the time in this house i mean they just called me this week and uh they're like we're seeing a new girl in the house like a, a ghost uh her and her husband seen a a 16 year old girl dressed in period clothing at the end of their bed she said i've never seen this girl in my house before <laughs> yeah i mean they see all kinds of shit and their daughter passed away in there and it's just a case that's ongoing you know it's just i don't think it's ever going to stop even if they move i don't think it's going to stop because i think the phenomena is based around the wife i think she's a catalyst to a lot of the phenomena that goes on in the house you know i think she's just one of these people that are like a magnet to paranormal phenomena it's just everywhere she goes they experience paranormal phenomena they've lived in many different houses the husband never experienced anything paranormal until he got and married her and when he married her he said he experienced her with night terrors she would get up screaming running through the house uh, he said, he said, the first time I experienced it, it scared the shit out of me. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And, and then, you know, we started experiencing paranormal phenomena in, in the house we were living in. I seen things that were moving on their own, things being thrown across the room. Uh, and then we moved to another house and paranormal phenomena happened. Then they moved to this house okay. and it's just the paranormal phenomena. The whole family sees paranormal phenomena and we experienced it as well. when we were in there pretty intensely. Scared the shit out of me uh, in the bathroom of the house. And uh, I was just like, wow, man, this thing is this creepy as shit. And I never experienced anything like that while I'm taking a piss. It was weird. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this thing comes up in my ear and says, there are many, but I am one. And it sounds like the exorcist in my ear. I, man, I... Uh, I, nope, I'd be done. 
<laughs> I'd be yeah. out. It would be going right back in the pants, whether I'm done or not. I, you know, sorry, I gotta go. I don't even think it was in yeah. my pants when I ran out the door, bro. It, it was in my hand. <laughs> I was like, Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't get out of that bathroom fast enough, man. I mean, it scared the shit out of me. I was like, "Oh my god!" I mean, I, I might have pissed on the wall a little bit. I don't know. I I, I got out of there, you know. <laughs> at least on the back of the toilet. Seat. We all know at least that. Yeah, much. there wasn't. That's what your liability insurance is. Y- yeah, for. exactly. Right. I'm like, yeah, we'll come back and clean that up later. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna... don't, don't do don't do any blacklight investigating in the back. <laughs> yeah, you see some shit up on the ceiling. That was me. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's my bad guy. <laughs> that's me. I went straight into Ghostbuster mode and pointed it right at the ghost. I could I couldn't help it. Sorry. Don't cross the streams. I'm sorry yeah. I had to say that. <laughs> you know, bathroom's kind of sacred to anybody. It's like you're alone time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, just man, all of a sudden I just feel this air like like wind comes up on me, like someone rushed up, you know, somebody rushes up on you and the air like still goes forward. I turned around, I'm like, what the hell was that? You know, the door didn't open up, so I'm like, all right, I thought it was Carl messing with me or something. And all of a sudden I hear this, you know, this voice like I mean like literally someone put their hand on my ear and, and was like, There are many, but I what? I, I could not get out of there fast. I think I jumped down like six flights of stairs down and boom <laughs> it's that, like an earthquake going on in that house, man. <laughs> They're like, where are you going? I was like, I'm going out to my car for a minute. See you, dude. Out to my car. I sat in my car for like 20 minutes. I was like, I don't, uh, I don't even want to go back in there, dude. Like, fuck. You know? Daddy's leaving to go get milk, kids. Yeah. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> they, they come out. They're like, you coming back in, man? I was like, yeah, I had to make a call. I'm lying. Like, I'm lying to them like shit. You know? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I had to make a call, dude. You know? And they're like, oh, all right. <laughs> 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 so then they're like, all right, we going back upstairs to the second floor. I said, uh, nah, I'm going to wait down here. You guys can go ahead up there. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to freak them out, you know, that this happened. So they go up there, they come back down, and we're, like, just looking at the monitors. And, and they're sitting, like, I don't know, about three feet from me. All of a sudden, they both look at each other, and they're like, do you hear that? I'm like, do I hear what? I just heard this voice in between us, man. It was creepy as shit. I was like, mm-hmm. I didn't hear anything. I was literally like three feet, three feet from him. I didn't hear anything. And they're like, I said, what did it say? He said, man, I don't know, man, but it was creepy ass sounding voice. And they're just looking at each other and <laughs> their eyes are like bugging out of their head. And they're like, I don't know what that was. So Carl's like looking at the camera system and uh, Carl's a pretty big guy. He's about 6'2", 290. He's a pretty big guy. And, you know, he's sitting in a chair and something pulls him away from the, the table him sitting in the chair it's like pulls him back he's like he jumps up and he's like man what the hell i'm like what i thought he pushed himself away from the, the table and he's like oh man something pulled me away from the table in the chair I, I, it pulled me back and his eyes were like bugging out of his head and he's like the biggest like skeptic ever i mean we go into a house he goes ah eh, you know buzz kills here i might as well just get my uh my exorcist outfit out nothing's gonna happen you know because that's just how he is you know <laughs> we call him buzz kill and uh you think there's something in here carl that is just kind of his reaction hey carl you think there's something in here yeah doubt it <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just like he's like he's like no, you know, he's just personality is just like dry, you know, there's some there. Nah, not near dude, it's good. <laughs> you know? So sometimes it's good to have that energy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so everybody's getting all worked up. There's gotta be one guy like breathe. But yeah, he was <laughs> after that, he was uh he was a believer. You know, he was just like, Man, I I never thought I would experience anything like this. And uh, I kind of got mad that it just happened to me, you know, so I, I said, <laughs> you know, this son of a bitch, you know, I said, this thing that probably was responsible for this little girl's death but with their daughter passed away in the house. So what happened was our first investigation we did there, we didn't come up with shit. We didn't really like we didn't have anything personal happen. Nothing, no personal experiences, nothing. We thought, man, this was a total dud. This was shit. We didn't get anything. We, and they were telling us all the stuff that was going on. And we we're like. I didn't experience shit. We were like driving home from Pittsburgh, you know, four and a half hours home. And I'm like, that sucked. We didn't experience shit. You know, nothing. No, nothing. I mean, I didn't have a, one personal experience at all. And right. we got home and we started reviewing the evidence. And Carl calls me up. He's like, hey, man, we got this voice on the recorder when we're down on the first floor. The recorder is up on the, the uh, handhelds up in this, on the hallway in the second floor. There's a man's voice in the recorder saying, I'll kill his kids. I was like, what? 
He's like, cool. yeah, dude. He said, there's a man's voice that says, I'll kill his kids. And we're on the first floor. There's no one on the second floor. We actually picked it up with three other recording devices, too. So it was a disembodied voice on the second floor. And, you know, I'm like, what the hell? I've never heard a ghost say I was going to kill somebody, ever. You know, never. Yeah. They had four daughters. We told them, I was like, look, we caught this voice saying it was going to kill your kids. And, and the husband, he's a big guy. His name's Dean. Really great guy. They're a great family. Awesome family. And uh, he's like, ain't nobody going to do shit to my kids or me. And he's like, ain't worried about the goddamn ghost. You know, and I'm like, I'm just telling you what, what the hell we heard. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, this is what we recorded. And I sent it to him. They listened to him. They're like, yeah, we ain't, we're not worried about that. So I'm like, okay. You know, I said, we'll, we'll, we'll come right. back. And uh, they're like, all right, we'll, we'll definitely want you to come back. So like two months later, I get a call from the, the wife. And uh, she's like, we found um, Lydia dead in the attic i'm like what and that's their youngest daughter i'm like found her dead in the attic they're like yeah uh, i mean she was really upset and i'm like holy shit like, i've never had this happen before i didn't know what to say you know what i mean i'm just like speechless on the phone you know she's upset i'm upset and i'm like call carl i'm like the girl died he's like what she died he's like no way i'm like yeah man they found her in the attic this morning she passed away and uh or just kind of blown away and this whatever was in the and is in this house it used to mess with her the most she would wake up in the middle of the night and there'd be a face over top of hers one night they had called me the lights are going on and off in her, in her room like just going on and off on and off on and off and they're like what do we do i was like get the hell out of there i was like, get out of there don't stay in that room don't get out of the room you know and they, they get out of the room because i'm like i'm four and a half hours away you know there's nothing i can do so you know, this just kept escalating with her you know things were happening in her room she would run out of the room scared and that's when she runs into this woman something happens she she's running down the stairs and she runs into this woman in the hallway on the second floor or the lady in black she has all black on like a black veil and her face is there's no face it's just black and she runs into this woman in the hallway and not long after that is when she she passes away I think it's a couple of weeks later she passes away and uh it's just a, a weird weird place man it's a really weird house i don't know how they live there i really don't that's some serious shit it is it really yeah. is and it mimics their voices her husband calls her jules her name's julie so he calls her jules she'll be in the kitchen like making dinner or something and she'll hear his voice behind him say hey jules and she'll turn around and he's not there he's not even in the house it's like mimicking her voice, mimicking his voice, kids' voices. They've seen this full-bodied apparition of a man uh, sitting on the stairs in the basement. It's just so much stuff that they've experienced. And they did have a Ouija board in the uh, in the house. And, you know, I, I got the Ouija board out. As an investigator, I want to see if it works. You know what I mean? So did it work? Sure. No. It didn't work. Yeah, I mean, I know, yeah, I'm like, all right, let's try this shit. You know, I want to see this thing move. <laughs> We're in a haunted house. All right, let's move this shit. I want to see this planchette move. You know, nothing happened. I, I noticed that it's real suggestive. Like, the planchette moves really easy on the board. You know, if you just touch it a little bit, it moves. You know, so, I'm like, well, you know, somebody could be fucking with you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, yeah. you move it, you know, they could do it. Easy is not even a problem. But they said they used it and it worked. I'm like, well... Let's try it. Nothing. I, I was on that thing for like an hour. It never moved one time. You know, so, but that's when we caught the voice on the second floor saying, I'll kill his kids exactly when we were playing with that Ouija board. So, was that a coincidence? Wow. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Was this, this voice saying, I'll kill his kids, was it responsible? Maybe scared her to death, have a heart attack? I, I really don't know. Um, was it like maybe foreseeing the future that she was going to die? Who knows? It's just one of those right. weird ass things that happens that you never think is going to happen, and it happens. It messed me up for a while, a couple of years. I, I I stopped investigating for a couple of years after that. It messed me up because I, I didn't expect anything like that to happen, and we're supposed to be helping them. We're not helping them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like we're supposed to be helping these people, and I'm not helping them. Their kid dies. Right. You know what I mean? It was it was a real sobering event that happened. You know, I was just like. I don't know if this shit's for me. You know, all these years I've been doing it, I just, I don't think I can do this shit anymore after this, you know, like, I wasn't expecting it to happen, and it happened. I don't think anybody expects that kind of stuff to happen. But then when it happens, it's like a total eye-opener. You're like, holy shit, this yeah. shit is serious, man. This is somebody's family. Somebody died. You know, am I responsible? Did this happen because I was there? You know what I mean? This is all the kind of shit that's going through your head that, am I responsible for this kid dying? You know what I mean? This thing taking something personal out on this kid and 
that kind of feeling for me and I, it messed me up for a while and then i finally kind of snapped out of it uh and started investigating again i mean that makes sense that's pretty freaking heavy because yeah you don't expect that to happen doing investigations i i mean i definitely like i know doing investigations can kick up stuff and make it more you know a little more active in the house after the investigators leave but something like that that's that's a lot oh hell yeah it was uh it was life changing for me. I, I definitely go about things a whole different way when I investigate. You know, you know, I don't do any kind of provoking or, or anything like that. I mean, I used to. You know, you you watch shows and you see people provoking to try to get things to happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that could be a really bad thing in a house, especially if someone's living there. Yeah, you could have something really take a personal attack on their family behind something you did, and if someone gets hurt. You got to live with that shit, man. The rest of your life if someone dies you have to live with that shit you're supposed to be helping not hurting that's how i look at it and you know i see a lot of paranormal groups that are online and just some of the careless shit that they do it's just you're like wow man you're telling people you can get rid of ghosts and demons and you're not qualified to do any of that kind of shit we don't even have a remote clue of how this shit happens paranormal event really occurs or happens so to tell somebody you can get rid of something that you can't see you can't touch they can touch you but you can't touch it that's ludicrous man you know that's ludicrous because yeah. we have no idea what these things are even capable of for one we don't know how the events occur we have no idea they just happens you know happen spontaneously it's just boom it, a paranormal event happens it could do anything to you if it can move large objects refrigerators furniture could it kill you hell yeah it could kill you why couldn't it you know what i mean why couldn't it snap your neck a piece of furniture is way heavier than your neck to be broken right yep i've always thought about that too like why i mean obviously people get hurt from paranormal events and stuff but you hear like these poltergeist stories where the furniture is literally flying around and it's like why wasn't it thrown in a way to actually hit the person because it's always it's like a show of force more than anything like it's not actually trying to harm you it just wants to scare the shit out of you yeah just like the thing with me in the bathroom it wanted yeah. to get me alone and that's what i was trying to get to them i was like this thing likes to scare you man like it knows what what scares you it likes to get you alone and isolate you and scare the shit out of you like it did that girl you know what i mean like it did the little girl and that's exactly what it was doing to her and that's exactly what it did to me and it did a good job of it because i'm not really afraid of too much i was a correctional officer i worked in supermax prisons with murderers rapists serial killer i worked around all that shit, and it didn't bother me but when something you can't see is right there in your face and you can't see it but it can see you and touch you that's a really creepy ass feeling and it's a helpless feeling to be honest if it wanted to do something yeah. to you it could do it and you can't see it you know what i mean you, you're not yep. seeing this thing it can see you and touch you but you can't touch it well and even if you can see it like if it is a full body apparition it's like what where are you gonna do punch punch a ghost in the face like yeah, what, i joke about it but a punch you, air your fist is just yeah <laughs> so it's you're very defenseless yeah and that's what's the amazing part about it is it can physically touch you but you can't physically touch it yeah it's like scientifically almost impossible right like producing cold spots ghosts produce cold spots and they do i felt them and i actually recorded them mm -hmm. on thermal imaging there's a cold spot everything we do we touch we move produces heat it doesn't produce cold you know what i mean nothing produces we, that we do produces cold unless it's something manufactured so how the hell do they yeah. produce cold they drop the atmosphere temperature 30 degrees where the room's cold how the hell is that even scientifically possible without some kind of machinery yeah it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. make any sense and it has you scratching your head like what the hell's going on here it's a pseudoscience but it's fascinating you know what i mean it's just something that is totally it's totally unexplainable i don't think we're ever going to come up with an answer to it i really don't There's, i mean it's yeah. it's definitely there it's definitely a phenomena there, but an answer that we're going to get, I don't think you're ever going to get it until you're gone. And if you ever do get an answer, is that the single only answer that explains everything or not? Yeah. <laughs> it could be more than one thing. You don't know. <laughs> I captured this black stuff in the house in um, an effort of PA, right? A lady said she's seen this black mist above her bed. I uh, would see it in the hallway. It would form into uh, a little boy with 
a red shirt with blue jeans with no face. You know, you, you hear people tell you this stuff and it's just like, yeah, hey, okay. I want to see it. Well, I set a camera up. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, where do you see it at in your room? She goes, well, it comes out of this closet. We never keep the closet door shut because it opens on its own. So we leave it open. It comes out of the closet and it, it floats around the room. And I said, I said, what's it? It's a black mist. Well, I'm like, okay. So I set the camera up. Boom. Go downstairs. I'm not downstairs five minutes. And this thing comes out of the closet on video. What the fuck? I mean, it, 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 it appears. I have it on video. If you guys want to check it out, it's on uh, YouTube. Yes. <laughs> We're like, yes. yes. Go to the Harrisburg Area Paranormal Society and look up Black Mask video, and you'll see it. And it appears at the closet, and it just it forms out of nothing. There's nothing there. And there's this black, like, spurt of energy. It is, it's there. It blocks out the closet jam. It's there for a few seconds. It disappears. That and is- then... This happens over a six minute period. Not like it's just like a quick two seconds. It happens over six minutes of this thing appearing, disappearing, appearing on one side of the room, moving to the closet, gets big, disappears. Where it gets so dark, you can't even see the door jam anymore. It's so black and it's creating its own mess is what it's doing. And you can't see the door jam anymore. And then it just evaporates into nothing. And you're like, how is this even possible? It's creating its own mess from nothing. There's nothing in that room that would be able for this thing to be able to create itself. Like no high energy levels. There was no high EMF levels. There was no uh, high geomagnetic fields. Nothing. It was absolutely nothing high about that room electrical. And it's creating a black mess. Like you cannot see through it. It's physically black it's, it's amazing it's the only video that i've ever caught over 25 years that i can say is amazing i've never right. seen anything like it anyway i'm not seeing these shadow figures and it, it reminds me of that like it was trying to create it was trying <laughs> to create i've seen a shadow figure on like four different occasions and it looks like that is trying to make itself into a shadow figure but maybe like it doesn't have enough energy and it just disappears you know it's really weird right. and this lady sees it all hey. the time I am definitely going to look up that video because that sounds like something that is very similar to an actual experience that I dealt with for a long time. Really? That'll be, that'll probably be a story for another day. But yeah, when I was in, (laughs) when I was in college, my apartment had something very similar and it had to do with the closet to the point where the mass was so dark that I could not see the street light that shone directly yeah. into my window. You watch this, you're going to shit. You're going to shit when you see this video because it sounds it's probably exactly what you've seen. And in a lot of in a lot of my in a lot of my cases, man, they've all seen the same kind of shit. It comes from the closet too. All the, I don't know why the closet, you, but that's where it comes from. <laughs> you're about to get a live reaction cuz JC just sent me the video. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm I'm actually watching it right now. So Yeah, me too. It's very it's very interesting. Yeah, we shot that it's... in. Uh, we put that camera, and that's one of the old CCT ca- TV cameras. That I shot that video. Holy twelve shit. years ago. Right. So yeah. I, high definition wasn't really that good back then, but I put a negative filter to that camera, and when I did, it ca- it was it captured that. You know what I mean? I just it's amazing. One of the most amazing videos I've ever, ca- only amazing videos I've ever captured. Um, I've captured doors opening up on their own and stuff like that, but nothing to that extent. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that is crazy. something, huh? And even, so let's say, even if there is a, like, oh, there are high electrical whatnots happening in the oh. house. Like, oh, hey. this is still Come fucking on. weird. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, totally weird, man. Dude. Totally weird. At the end, like, towards the end, when it moves out of the closet. Across the room. And yeah. definitely moves across the room. Yeah. Uh-huh. What the hell is that? <laughs> you, you notice how it dips down to the floor? It almost like it tries to yes. hide from the camera for some reason, but it, like, dips down to the floor and goes over to that dresser next to the bed. If you look at that video, right, I never noticed this over all the years I've had that video. I've had that video for probably 12 years. If you look at the closet, there's a dark spot. And if you look at the dresser, there's a dark spot. Now, I hate staying fucking portals, but it manifests at that dark spot, and it manifests at the dark spot at that dresser. Now, is that a portal where that thing is coming in and out of back and forth? I don't know, but I'm highly thinking that's what it is. Because there's no reason those dark spots should be there whatsoever. And they're there. 
No, it's so bizarre. The way that it moves, it's like it. Li- and I'll I'll definitely add this into their show notes as well. It's but, like fluid because um, everybody should watch this. Yeah, it's um, it can't just be a shadow. It actually moves like in a mm-hmm. very purposeful direction. Yeah. yeah. Um, and changes its shape. And is this on like a second floor or it's, something? It, it, That's like crazy. In their, in their bedroom, in the uh, in the wife's bedroom. Yeah. Okay. And I had it. I had wow. it. I had the camera sitting back toward the wall where the windows were, and we had the windows blacked out, and the camera was sitting on the dresser facing right. out to the hallway. I, I wasn't. I, I had literally just left that room. You look at the time; it's like nine oh six or something like that at the top. I literally just left the room and went down to talk to the client because we were setting other cameras up. We were still setting cameras up. Luckily, I I set that camera up first, and mm. we were capturing oh it. God. It's amazing most amazing video i've yeah. ever caught so like someone could say in the beginning oh that's a shadow that someone produced no. like oh someone's like standing yep. there but no. no that second one even like there's no freaking way it can't just change its shape and like yeah. move i'm watching like i'm watching the second one slow down right now and that don't yeah really yeah i slowed the speed yeah. down to show you that there's an, and i tried to debunk Easy. that any way i could and i could not debunk that whatsoever and i sat in that closet yeah I sat in that closet and got poked one time, one time on an investigation after that. Something like, felt like they took their thumb and jammed it right in the middle of my back. I jumped up out of that chair. I said, I'm not sitting back in that closet anymore, man. Nope, not doing it. Something with that closet. Oh. Don't know what the hell it is. That does look exactly like what I experienced in college, though, for sure. The way you described yes. it, that's what it sounds like. That. It looks yeah. like just like that. Yeah. You know, once again, we have multiple people who've seen something like this. And it's not the first time that I've heard heard of someone talking about a, quote, black mist. First time I've seen it on camera. So that's really freaking cool. I listen, you know, I listen to a lot of other paranormal podcasts and other ghost story podcasts. And that comes up quite a bit. So, I mean, it's out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. the luck- Congratulations, you yeah. caught it. I mean, oh it's my the God. lucky, it's, it's so the weird. luckiest shit I've ever caught. Like all the years I investigated, you know, I'm watching that video. It's probably like two o'clock in the morning at my house, you know, and I'm I'm staying up watching evidence, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I get to that camera and I'm watching, and I'm like, what the fuck, what the fuck Whoa. is that? I'm like, what is that? I jumped up. I'm like, fuck yeah! I'm like screaming loud. Like, yes, <laughs> yes! Right? My wife's like, what the fuck are you doing down there? I'm like, I fucking got a ghost on film. You know what I mean? I'm like, holy shit! You know, I'm like, I can't. All the I was like ten years into doing it, I never ever seen anything on video. Finally, here it is. That last clip is bonkers. Right? What the hell? It materializes itself from nothing. You know, and I, I had it on YouTube for a long time, and people were like putting negative shit on there that I faked it. Man, I don't do this shit to fake anything. I'm not in this for any money. I've spent probably thirty thousand dollars worth of my own money and equipment. You know what I mean? Like I'm not doing this shit to be famous because I know that's never going to happen. I love when people say, "Oh, you're just doing this for like clout or whatnot." It's like no, what? What clout? No. And if I was doing it for clout, why would this be like I could do better? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know shit. I don't know shit like, about computers to fake anything. For one, you know what I mean. Like I'm, I'm not technical savvy about anything with the computer. I, I, when people put that shit on there, it was like totally piss me off. I'm like, you assholes don't even realize you're seeing a real ghost. Like this is real shit, and you're talking about it's fake. It's not fake. What? It's a thousand percent real. Wow, yeah. man, I can't believe these people. You try to show them the truth, and you, they're, they're saying it's fake. You know, I mean, it's it's part of society because there's so many people that fake shit for notoriety. Uh, yeah, we address that yeah. actually quite a bit. We we started doing technical uh little little like thirty minute technical things based off the fact that like TikTok and YouTube they're doing it for hits. You know, yeah, they're yeah they're doing it. They they are doing it for yeah. money. These two idiots that we called out on the very first one that we ever did. They're like, oh, we found this abandoned place, blah, blah, blah. It, it took me literally 10 seconds to find where they were. I was like, no, it's it's actually, it's an abandoned rail car. I think there's three of them together. But it's actually listed on the abandoned places on, like, you just Google it and it'll take you to any abandoned places site. It'll give you the geolocation <laughs> for it. Everybody knows where the fuck it is. It's not some yeah. secret. And then they're like, oh, there's wolves here and this place is haunted. And then you hear a loon 
And I actually commented as Mission Spooky because we're on TikTok. And, and I said, you guys ran away from a fucking bird. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're happy with yourselves. And you're both in the army. So I don't know. That doesn't bode well for... <laughs> uh, it's worth defending know. our country, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did say that. I did. I was like, come on, guys. I mean, you're trained killers, right? I mean, seriously. So we started doing that and, and actually trying, though, to help people to be like, hey, this is what the loon sounds like. This is what foxes sound like. This is what farm animals sound like demonic things from hell. Yeah. I didn't realize until my neighbors got a mule. Or I'm sorry, they have a donkey. That's a donkey. Oh, they make a hell of dude, a racket. I'm, oh my God, dude. I was out here and talk about like the perfect setting. I'm out here. I live in the woods. The farm is behind us. Like I know they're there. They've been there forever, right? But they've never had a donkey. Clouds are coming in. I'm trying to get the last of the tomato plants in the ground because it was like, you know, spring. But it, there's a thunderstorm coming in. So everything gets super dark and it's like almost eight o'clock at night. But we still had light, you know, because it's the beginning of the summer. And all of a sudden, this demonic sounding awful noise comes from what I can only assume was a portal to hell opening in the middle of the forest. <laughs> oh my God. It took me a minute. And then at the end of that yell is the e aw, e aw. And I was like, oh, for God's sake, they bought a damn donkey. <laughs> Holy shit. <sighs> I didn't run, but I did look she into the forest. <laughs> I thought that was just because I was old, JC. <laughs> well, a little bit of both, you know. <laughs> Bladder control problems and all, you know. That's like, but that's like one of the best videos I've ever called. That and uh, called a door opening up on its own in a piano store we were investigating in uh, Ohio. Those two videos are the only videos I've captured over twenty plus years. It's how rare that shit is. If you get it, but it's amazing. I I've watched that video probably a million times. <laughs> mm -hmm. i watched it five times just now <laughs> just trying to come up with an answer to it or how it happened you know what i mean like what made it do that and i went back into that house several times and trying to figure out what could have produced that and i could never figure it out now, there definitely wasn't a shadow from outside it, there's no way there's there's a shadow from outside because there's no there's nothing there that can produce a shadow to make that move like that i was gonna add when you're talking about the people who like all, all of a sudden they'll poo poo it because like oh no it's not real you must be faking it we did an episode last year i think it was on um the haunted military bases of japan uh specifically because a lot of those <laughs> i know he's gonna laugh a lot of those stories are coming places that we have our troops had been stationed there's so many videos out there cameras that are government cameras right because they're on the base they're catching all kinds of shit. Our guys, our military is putting it up there being like, "Have you, wait till you see this shit. It clearly is this white mist that forms out of literally nothing and goes right through the camera. And you get all these responses from guys who've been on the base being like, dude, this we see this all the time. It's so scary. I have to be outside. This is a checkpoint. I'm telling you, like, it's real. Like, it happens to us. Uh, the other story about the guy from World War II... Uh, that comes up to him and asks him for a cigarette. There were men who said, oh, this story is 100% true. Like it, we've experienced this. We don't know how to, else to tell you. But there's always somebody who's like, oh, you guys are faking it. I'm like, they're in the military. I mean, not that I should just trust them right away because of that. But I mean, seriously, do you think that they're going to like, most people don't want to come out and talk about this stuff. They're actually like opening up and being like, dude, this is a scary damn base. Like there's a reason why we closed that entire portion of the base. Nobody goes in or out of that gate anymore because nobody wanted to take night watch. What the fuck does I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's fucking hot. Hell yeah. We came up with a form where like the United States government have like a form for we're closing this section because it's too fucking haunted. <laughs> too spooky form. <laughs> yes, it's too spooky form. <laughs> Stuff like that pisses me off because I'm like, come on, guys, like it's on camera and it's from the base. It's, you know, nobody's trying to fake that. It's just uh, whatever, man, you know, some people that will, for whatever reason, never admit any like they yeah. always always an excuse and it's like sooner or later well i already believe we have enough documented like evidence of like thermal imaging cameras like john had said where it's like you see a drastic temperature drop in one specific location in the center of a room with nothing that's like affecting it that can be seen anyway 
So it's not like, oh, an air draft, because you'd see the cool air coming in and it, it, it wouldn't make sense. There's so many people that will never accept for whatever reason. I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's always somebody, you know, that's, oh, yeah, you're fake, dude. You're fake. Man, I'm not in this shit to fake anything, dude. You either take it as how it is or, you know, move on. Yeah. I'm not in this to fake anything, dude. Like, that's not what I do. <laughs> I do this for my own personal reasons, but I do it to help people too. You know, I want to help them try to some kind of validation of what they're experiencing, you know, and everything she said that she's seen, we captured on that video. You know, mm -hmm. she said, Oh my God, you find you captured it. You captured it. I was like, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got everything you said you've seen. We got it. And her husband didn't, you're her not, husband didn't believe crazy. her. Her husband did not believe her because he didn't see it. He would he was going to work at like one o'clock in the morning. He was a truck driver. And this this stuff would be happening after he left. When we showed him the video, he's like, I didn't believe her. Oh my god, there's definitely something in the house. I was like, No oh shit. You know what I mean? There's definitely something here. How many times have we heard though about the, you know, the husband is the non believer? A lot. Oh no, sweetheart. You're just, yeah, you're just having an episode. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. Just go get some sleep. <laughs> that's, it. that's what's that? That's the old uh, hysteria diagnosis. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Seeing ghosts is a woman crazy thing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God my husband is not like that. <laughs> So do you have like a favorite paranormal TV show, one that you find <laughs> to actually be kind of credible? Because obviously all of them have the entertainment aspect. So they're they're going to try to entertain more than they're going to try and find stuff. That would probably be uh, Ghost Hunters when they first came out. It kind of set the standard. You know, the Warrens kind of put paranormal investigations on the map as far as paranormal investigating. But Ghost Hunters kind of showed you how to really organize as being a paranormal investigation team. You know what I mean? Jason Hall did a really good job of showing people how to organize and do it the right way. And, and we emulated kind of what he did. He kind of cre he created a, a organization called the Taps Family. And uh, we've been a part of that organization since it started. And we do all their cases in Pennsylvania. When they get a case, we do their oh, cases wow. for them. They'll send us a, a case file, and we'll go out and investigate that case for them. And um, I think they had it, you know, in their heart to do really good. And they've done, they've established the Tabs family all over the world, not just in the United States. The Tabs family members all over the world, and um, I, it's a good organization. It's a it's a really strong organization. It's all about caring about people and helping people. And we don't charge any money to do anything. I mean, we pay for everything out of our own pocket to go travel out of state, to help people. I just think it's a really good organization. And, you know, it's a TV show, of course, you know, to make money off of it. But what he did uh, to organize that many teams around the world is, uh, is pretty amazing to me. Yeah. He didn't have to give a shit, but he did to, to help people. He just kept making shows and making money for himself and, you know. And he put his time into to create a network of paranormal teams to help families. There's only a certain amount of teams in each state, and we're one of those teams. I'm pretty proud of being a part of it. I've been a part of it since its existence. And uh, I've talked with Jason and investigated with Jason and, and Ghost Hunters. And it was a pretty cool thing, you know, to be on national television. You know, you watch these guys on TV, and then you're there investigating with them. It was a, it was a real cool thing. It was uh, it was an honor to investigate with them, to be honest. Really down to earth people and nice. I was surprised. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was surprised. I thought maybe there would be some assholes or something. You know what I mean? But they were actually really cool. I was like, damn, this Jason's all right, man. He's like a construction worker like me. You know, I'm a construction worker. And he's like, hey, John, how the hell are you, man? You're looking pretty good. Let's go. Let's do this shit, huh? I'm like, all right, this guy's all right with me, dude. Cusses, I'm cool. That's awesome. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's a big part of my day is cussing. So, you know, somebody cusses their aces with me, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to Mission Spooky. <laughs> I say it was like the 20 years of being a chef that uh, did it for me. I, I curse like a sailor. It's terrible. My husband yells at me all the time. Like, I can't help it, <laughs> it just happens. 
our featured music for today is by Goth Goth from their album called Inscrutable with their song Russian Movie Night. It's fantastic, guys. Go check it out. They're on Bandcamp and on Spotify. And when we get back, we will talk a little bit more with John and um, we're just going to hang out with John. Welcome back, everybody. Gorgeous. Good job. All right. So, John, you've got the book coming out pretty soon. Not sure exactly the drop date, but I'm going to say that maybe by the time this comes out, it's probably going to be maybe either available on Amazon or look for it on a pre-order. And that is called Unholy Structure. I meant to ask you, is it just Anna Maria Manalo as the author or is it going to be like a joint is your name going to be attached to it as well? My name will be attached to it, but she's the author, yeah. And then you have a podcast, too. I do. I'm pod being called The Paranormal Journal. We do some live. We're going to go live and uh, start going live on Friday nights in October at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, right now we're just doing pre-records and some lives here and there. But uh, it's getting a pretty good traction. Uh, I've only been doing it for mm, almost a year now just talk about all our paranormal stuff our case files over the last 20 years and the stuff we're experiencing cases and our opinions on on some of the stuff that's going on with like tv and these pair celebs and fun of stuff sometimes you know a lot of times actually (laughs) (laughs) a lot of times like you guys yeah i see that show with uh chris fleming yeah it was kind of funny you know you know but uh and we also have uh, our website, you know, the Harrisburg Area Paranormal Society. You can go to uh, www.harrisburgareaparanormal.com if you need any paranormal help case-wise. We travel all over Pennsylvania. We're not limited to travel. We'll travel outside of Pennsylvania, Maryland, D.C., Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Ohio. We go all over the place. Pittsburgh, you know, we're, every, we're everywhere. Drop us a line, hit that help button, and uh, we'll help you out as best we can. And so far, I have uh, I've only gotten to listen to a couple of episodes of the uh, podcast, but I do like the fact that you guys are got a nice range there. It's like if you've got something on shadow people or like you said, you're bringing up your old case files. That's pretty cool. (laughs) Twenty five years worth of information is available. So highly recommend. It's very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. As always, stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us. Uh, Just remember these words of wisdom from John, though. When you're paranormal investigating, something comes up on you in the dark, don't piss your pants like I did. 